guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a great day. I've got my Ellen here with me. I'm just at home right now. I figured I would do this from home instead of going back to the studio early. I figured I'd hang out with my kitty for a little bit longer. <laughs> so today's topic is for the ladies. So sorry guys. Um, it's all about using your hormonal cycle um, to figure out what your training schedule should be like because during different phases of our cycles, we experience different I think we're back. I'm the Wi-Fi here sucks. <laughs> so a friend asked me to talk about this and um, I found it really interesting. Um, I looked up some stuff and I found it really interesting and um, we really can as women use our monthly cycles to help us train more efficiently and uh, know when we should be training harder, uh, when we should be re relying more on carbohydrates rather than fats and um, it's very interesting indeed. <laughs> We're probably going to keep cutting out here, so sorry for the interruptions. <laughs> uh, for the typical uh, woman, her cycle is about 28 days on average. Uh, some of us, it might be a little more, a little less. Um, so myself, I am completely irregular, so <laughs> I never know. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a regular cycle that works on a 28-day cycle, you're very lucky because then you can uh, you can use that a little bit easier than if you're kind of always more irregular and trying to figure out what part of your, your cycle that you're in. So first we'll just talk about the four cycles. So the follicular phase is from day zero to 14. And uh, during this phase you have You also have <laughs> back to this. Um, you also have a greater force generation capacity, just meaning you can uh, create more force, which means you can lift heavier weights basically and work out a little more intensely. Um, next uh, phase is the ovulation phase, and uh, this is around day 14, and your relative strength capacity remains high. I don't even know if this is going to stay on or not. This is so aggravating. <laughs> um, so the ovulation phase, that's where you still have a greater ability to generate force. So you're still feeling stronger, still have a higher tolerance for pain. Um, so a good time to train hard. Um, the luteal phase lasts from about day 15 to 28. And during this phase, your body experiences a higher than normal temperature. So this means that your cardio output could be altered. Um, you could be less efficient during exercise, and this phase is where you're going to feel fatigue sooner and a little more than normal. So this is not the greatest time to be working hard. And then finally, menstruation, and during this phase is where water retention and PMS start to subside, and you're getting ready to start again um, into the follicular phase where you're gonna be feeling stronger again. So, what should you be doing during these phases? So during the follicular phase, uh, you should be focusing on, tr on your training progress. So since you're stronger, you're gonna wanna take advantage of this. So during this phase, um, your body tends to use more carbohydrates as a fuel source than it does fat. So this means that you can train more intensely. Um, you can do those more powerful workouts where your body is going to need to use uh, glycogen for that quick source of energy. So this is the time to train hard, do those intense workouts and um, you know train through that good pain, make sure it's good pain and really enjoy your workouts. So it's going to feel good, you're going to feel strong and you're going to get a lot accomplished. Um, during the next phase, during ovulation phase, uh, your strength is still high as I mentioned. So this is a great time to attempt some personal records if you want to. Um, but unfortunately, this is also a time where you're more susceptible to injury. Um, during this phase, estrogen levels are higher than normal, and um, what happens when your estrogen phases are, are, or sorry, your estrogen levels are higher is it interferes with collagen synthesis and neuromuscular control. So your risk for ACL injuries, in particular, are higher during this time, actually at their highest during ovulation. Um, if you want to check out a study on that, there's a link in my blog to one if you want to check that out. Um, so go ahead and train hard 
during the ovulation phase, but just make sure your form is perfect and you're really focusing on what you're doing. So if you're starting to get fatigued and you're losing focus, just take a break. You don't want to injure yourself. Then phase three, the luteal phase, um, this is where you'll retain more water and uh, you won't be able to participate as comfortably in activities that are more intense. So this is a good time to opt for more low impact stuff such as yoga, um, swimming, um, just maybe even just stretching or working on your balance. And during this time, your body tends to rely more on fat for energy. So um, this is good for doing low impact activities um, because uh, when you're doing low to moderate activity, um, your body is um, working more off of its fat stores and it doesn't really need to um, utilize the glycogen that you have stored up. So this is a good time to kind of take it easy and, uh, you know, let your body recover and work on things such as, you know, balance and stretching and stuff like that. And then finally, during menstruation, you can start doing higher intensity activities. You might not really feel like it, but this is a good time to start getting into the higher intensity stuff um, because your body is starting to transition back into that follicular phase where your strength is going to be high and you have a greater capacity for work and you um, have a better tolerance for pain. So, and this is also a good time um, to increase your carb intake a little bit because for those intense workouts that you're going to do, you're going to need to be able to utilize uh, stored glycogen um, for those, those bursts of power and that high intensity workout. So, that's it. Just a really short one today. Sorry about all those little blips there as we went in and out. <laughs> Stupid Wi-Fi here. Um, I hope that kind of sheds some light on it. Um, if you have a regular cycle, this is going to be really, um, really good for you to use. So, you know, stick to the um, advice here and you'll get the most out of your workouts and um, you'll give your body what it needs at the right time. Um, if you're quite irregular, um, it can be a little more tricky, but just, you know, keep a diary and um, kind of figure out sort of where everything's happening when it's happening and plan your training around that and you can tell you can tell with how you feel too i know there's certain times where i just feel like super strong and you know i feel like i can do anything i'm feeling great and i can work through that pain and so i know now that that's the the follicular phase of the, of the cycle and that's a good time to be pushing and then those days where you're feeling really blah low energy you know go with that honor your body and go with that feeling and go with those lower intensity workouts um, your body's going to be using more fat for energy so you want to do the lower intensity stuff anyways and um, just use this information to your advantage so that you're not wasting your time uh, with your training you're not doing the wrong things at the wrong time and you're also decreasing your risk of injury so the more you know about where you are in your cycle uh, the better you're able to um, do things so that you are getting the best results without uh, risking injury and keeping in mind that um, it's during the ovulation phase where you are more susceptible to injury, especially ACL. So anyone who's ever struggled with an ACL injury, you know it's bad. <laughs> so you want to be careful during that time. Like I said, just, you know, work hard, but stay focused on, on uh, what you're doing and make sure your form is perfect. All right, so that's it. I'm going to go before this cuts off again. <laughs> if you have any questions um, or comments, leave them below. If there's a topic you want me to check out and talk about, uh, please let me know. My friend Tina is awesome for doing that. I love it. Um, and if you need to talk to me privately, feel free to message me anytime.